All right, so uh, in a landmark announcement yesterday, and I know because I marked land when I heard this, uh, the office of the comptroller of the currency, whoo, big word, but again, we just appointed somebody very bullish on cryptocurrency to that position. It's actually pretty important. You guys should read up about it. United States regulators said that they are going to be allowing banks to provide custody solutions for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies for American citizens. Repeat that. The Office of the Comptroller of the Currency just said, yo, banks in the United States, you are good to go. Provide those banking services. Drop the mic. Yeah, that just happened, guys. Now, this is an extremely important development for the cryptocurrency industry. And it is coming amidst Senate hearings on digitizing the United States dollar, along with China's digital UN positioning itself to challenge the dollar's global dominance. Although China has a myriad of problems uh, before it's ready to step up to the big dogs. Uh, Reuters was the first to break the news on Wednesday that the United States, that, that national banks in the United States and federal savings associations of all sizes are going to be allowed to hold crypto assets for their customers. I don't know where to start with this, right? Behind this decision, obviously, is the OCC. That's the office of the comptroller of the currency. And again, it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody in our audience that's been paying attention because streamlining crypto regulation is something that we speculated on when we reported earlier this year when ex coinbase lead legal counsel brian brooks was uh was tapped for the top job at the comptroller's office right we covered this way back in the day and hear anybody else talk about this brian brooks i'm in i hear he likes bush light though so i, I don't know not everybody makes great decisions now in the announcement from the occ uh, they described this custody service as a modern form of traditional banking activities and in many ways, this is a major precedent that's being set as far as U.S. regulation is concerned. Uh, this relates to cryptocurrency like across the board, right? If you were wondering if Bitcoin or crypto in general was going to be brought into the traditional banking fold, uh, it is. Uh, the answer is yes, we're there. So in their outline of this policy shift, they're talking about how digital currencies exist on the blockchain and how there is no physical possession of the instrument uh, instead, they recognize that access requires cryptographic keys and those and possession of those keys is what the banks will be taking custody of uh, in the event of taking custody of your digital assets. Now, the OCC goes on to note that providing such services carries a lot of fiduciary and non-fiduciary responsibilities, meaning the bank is going to be expected to provide safekeeping for these cryptographic keys that allow for the control and transfer of their customers' digital funds, like they would any other customer uh, asset on deposit. Don't just let somebody walk into your vault and take your customer's gold or old coins. Now, as far as the entire cryptocurrency community is concerned, despite the fact that having third parties like banks store your Bitcoin being contrary to the ethos of decentralization, it does seem that the majority of the crypto Twitter space is liking this idea of traditional finance merging with the crypto industry. You know, highlighting the fact that this opens millions, millions of retail participants to entering our market when their local commercial banks grant a level of legitimacy to crypto and offer customers the ability to buy or diversify their holdings into crypto portfolios or savings accounts. Uh, listen, you know, the, the, the DeFi craze is amazing. It's fantastic. It's awesome. But you guys are going to see traditional financial institutions take advantage of this new asset class. The markets have clearly spoken. I'm looking forward to like 60 years, like probably the rest of my life of eventually going down to my local bank and being offered like a HELOC in crypto, right? We're like, hey, Justin, we noticed that, you know, you've, you've got like X amount of BTC. Uh, how about you put that into our, uh, you know, our liquidity protocol and earn an extra 2.6%. The, the things that we're going to see are going to be fantastic. And it is going to be a fusion of uh, the old and the new. It's going to be a fusion of traditional finance because they don't do everything wrong. Like clearly they have all the money. So they're doing something right. Uh, combined with, you know, the new method of doing things, which granted, some of them are absolutely fantastic and awesome in the way that we should be doing things, but they don't have all the answers, right? Got a lot of idealism. So let's, let's parrot this guy for a while. Now, uh, blockchain expert and ex Citibank analyst, Ian Lee, uh, tweeted his take on this whole situation, uh, stating that this is huge news for the industry, right? He says, quote here, uh, one day, one day we'll see Bitcoin and your Chase and City Online bank accounts. Uh, because of the profits and the importance of deposits to banks, you're going to be seeing them one day offer Bitcoin to buying like Square uh, and lending like BlockFi. Just, just, like just like I said. So make no mistake about this. Yesterday's policy call by the OCC is going to go down in history 
uh, as a, a as a watershed moment uh, in Bitcoin's adoption. It's going to be it's, it's a milestone in crypto's history here in the United States, and it's going to pave the way for a new wave of retail adoption and the institutionalization of public digital currencies um, to something more than just speculative trading instruments like this. Uh, this is the time, guys. Right. So uh, re song recommendation of the day. Nevermore. This is the time. So the future is not going to come down to a battle uh, between fiat and crypto. Right. These two financial assets are going to learn uh, to coexist together. They're going to do the two step. Have you seen it? A little bit of HELOC, a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll. Uh, but this is massive, guys. Uh, and again, this is not the time to go out and bet the farm. Uh, but if you, like I, have been kind of maybe suffering under a little bit of malaise over the last few years, like after the 2017 and 2018, you know, run up and dump down, just like, man, are these altcoins actually going to do something? Like, can I, should I be buying these things for the long term? You know, these things just going to go to zero in a few years, or is this going to be, are we doing this, right? Are we doing this? Well, we're doing this. Let me know your guys' thoughts and comments in the section down below. Uh, seriously, guys, I, I love the comments. Respond to them. And we are going to be selecting a random commenter once a month to receive free access to our premium trading group, a one-month premium basic subscription, giving you access to our premium indicator suite, premium signal service, and our uh, introductory educational material, our onboarding tracking sheets, and our premium Discord community. Uh, not uh, premium basic subscriptions do not receive the online trading academy, nor do they receive the community or one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Uh, those are for the premium plus and premium professional packages. However, boom, free stuff, amazing things. Let me know your comments down in the section below. Question is, um, you know, are you guys as excited about this as I am? Is this a bullish fundamental for you guys? Or is there something here that... Um, is rotten in the state of Denmark that I'm not missing. Let me know. Let me know what I missed.